in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, could we have the roll call, please? Thank you. Commissioner Banzel? Here. Commissioner Frazier? Here. Commissioner Lorenzer? Here. Commissioner Schlegel? Here. Commissioner Stonehouse? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Here. Commissioners, we have one member absent from tonight's meeting. Do we have a motion to excuse her? Uh, Commissioner Bonsell? I move that we excuse uh, Mayor Jenna Smith. Uh, she's on maternity leave. Uh, Commissioner Stonehouse? I motion to uh, second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Motion passes 6-0. Uh, we have several announce, oh, excuse me, first we have approval of the agenda. We do have an agenda in front of us, um, but bef before we approve this agenda, I do, I'm going to need to um, remove one item because of the new restrictions uh, due to the coronavirus. We are postponing um, item number three, the presentation on the life-saving efforts. We um, look very much forward to honoring the folks who have uh, provided such an important contribution to us in our community and, and the chief of police will be back to make that award at a future meeting. Commissioner Bonsall. Uh, I would move uh, that we add an, an item to new business uh, for discussion of the city's coronavirus response. Commissioner Stonehouse. I second. Discussion? Second the motion, yes. Yeah, uh, sorry, discussion. Discussion, no further discussion. Okay. okay, so clerks do note that we will add an item. Um, is that now gonna be nine? Or, yeah, that'll be item number nine that we'll discuss our coronavirus response. Your Honor, I have a uh, item to uh, add to the agenda and that would be uh, concerning Commissioner Lawrence's letter of resignation. Do I have a second? Commissioner Bonsall? I will second that motion. Thank you. Uh, so we now also have an item number 10 which will be a um, discussion or uh, an announcement of resignation to receive and accept the resignation letter. Okay, and then finally in announcements, <clears throat> we are gonna be running the, the meeting uh, today differently. I just wanted to review that with folks. Um, let me find our notice. Sorry, it's here on the internet somewhere. Um, for tonight's meeting, lost my internet, here we are. Um, we are physically closing this meeting to the public in order to comply with social distancing requirements recently established throughout the state of Michigan. The meeting is being broadcast live on Charter Cable Channel 191 and is streamed live online at marquettemi.gov forward slash meeting feed. Uh, it is possible to call into the meeting. There is a number that is available. We currently have the phone line open. There is no one on the phone at this time. It is a conference call, so people are invited to call in and can participate in the public comment period as well as listen to the entire meeting by phone. Um, in addition, public residents may submit public comments, which will then be read into the record. All public comments can be submitted digitally through email to shobbins at marquettemi.gov. All comments submitted will be read into the public record during the meeting's normal public comment period. Written comments must be submitted no, longer than five, no later than 5.45 p.m. And as always, when submitting a public comment, please include your first and last name and your full address. Please limit submissions to 500 words or less as the three minute speaking time limit will still be in effect when you speak on the phone. Um, <clears throat> information on how to do this was released as a public service announcement today. And we can, um, and it, we will advise this and revi revise this as needed going forward according to the, um, whatever the state continues to do to keep our public health safe. Uh, that's, um, 
announcements, we will now move on to agenda items. Our first agenda item is, on a, is appointments. Commissioner Slagle. Uh, is this going to be read at all or just uh, as is clerk? Do, do we normally read the appointments? I don't remember. Okay. The full full description. All right. Uh, Madam Mayor, pro tem, I would like to make the motion to appoint uh, Callie New to the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, to Alex Tizio to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, to Sarah Bixby to Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, and Michael Dunn to the Planning Commission as presented. Do I have a second? Commissioner Frazier. Second. Discussion? We just want to thank the uh, people for putting so much effort into uh, serving on these advisory boards. They are insanely import important to our community and to the uh, work that we are able to accomplish every day. So thank you very much. Commissioner Frazier? Okay. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor, please vote yes. 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 All, in favor, uh, all opposed, say no. Motion carries 6-0. <clears throat> Uh, item number two, we have two reappointments on our agenda this evening. Do I have a motion? Commissioner Schlegel. Your Honor, I motion to reappoint uh, J. Matt Tushini to the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority for a term ending 020123, and Jeremy Ottaway to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a term ending 0215 23. Uh, Commissioner Schlegel. Let's second the motion. Discussion? Again, just uh, glad that these folks are willing to serve. All right, seeing no f any further discussion, uh, all in favor, please say yes. 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 And those opposed, say no. All right, motion carries 6 0. We've now reached the public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, <clears throat> as far as I can tell on the technology, we don't have anyone on the phone at this time. So um, the music is going. <laughs> Here's some, I think it's Mozart uh, playing for us here. At least we have nice music on our city system. Um, <clears throat> it's also available, as folks can see on, on the screen, um, the call-in number is available. Um, there will be a second comment period, so if folks are watching at home or um, online, p please feel free to use the call-in, and you could speak during the second comment period. All right, public comment is now closed. All right, we are now at item number four, a presentation on the Investment Advisory Board by Chief Financial Officer Gary Simpson. Hello. I'm not sure if this is the most ill-timed presentation or the most perfectly timed <laughs> presentation. Uh, so this is regarding the annual report from the Investment Advisory Board. Uh, the board was established in 1980 by the City Commission, and we have a prime directive of the city's public funds are invested in a manner which will provide the highest investment return with maximum security while meeting the city's daily cash flow demands in conformance with all state statutes and local ordinances governing the investment of public funds.
some of our accomplishments. Uh, let me get caught up on the slides here. Accom accomplishments during the last year, uh, we continue to retain a low fiscal inter indicator score, which in this case is very good. Uh, we're often considered a top 10 uh, financial community in the state, which for our demographics is excellent. Um, Marquette's also very well respected nationally, I do know that. Uh, we also just received for the 33rd year in a row the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement of Excellence in Financial Reporting, so people can be assured that the results we are spitting out are fair and accurate. And as I uh, previously reported, our most current investment yield is 0.96%. Compared to a year ago, it was 1.18%. But there's really nothing we can do about that at the present time. So that concludes the exciting presentation. Again, you missed the important part. We need three new board members, so if anybody's listening, please apply. All you need is a uh, heartbeat, and we'll, we'll be happy. So. Are there any questions? Commissioner Lawrence, sir. Thank you, Gary. Um, so I, I really appreciate that our money is safe. There's one thing that I've looked up recently, and it was about um, socially uh, responsible investments and um, there's something called like a B rating for, for investment companies and CDs where we're not only insured that our money is safe but that it's not being invested in, in predatory home lending, um, in, in things like uh, fossil fuels for instance. And I know that if we were, I looked at who we invest with and if we were investing in some of those same companies 10 years ago, we would have actually inadvertently probably contributed to the financial crisis of, of home lending. Um, I know we have restrictions for what the city can do as far as what we're allowed to invest in. Do you know of any way that the city of Marquette can invest in this new movement of socially responsible or ethical investing? Yeah, about the best thing we could do and. Uh, we have to be very careful. A lot of that you see in mutual fund type investments. And we're very restricted as to what we can invest in. It's usually anything federal, state, or local, and you know, bonds, notes, that kind of a thing. We can invest in CDs, mm -hmm. and we can't really control what the bank does with that money, but they do promise us, you know, they use that money to provide you know, mortgages and that kind yeah. of a thing. So we're very restricted as to what we can invest in. Um, you know, I wish I could say we could invest in toilet paper and Perel, <laughs> portion, but, but we just can't do that. Yeah. Um, so we're... But I, I've done the, the research behind who we're investing with, and I think, I mean, Wells Fargo, Wachovia, um, has made significant reforms in how they are investing their money. Um, they appear to have a really good track record of an environmental investing, uh, renewable energy. So I just want to make sure that um, going forward, the city is cognizant of, of, of where our money goes because it just doesn't go to that investment. It's invested in other things. And, and a lot of those lucrative things can be societally dangerous. Um, so, thank you for your presentation. Well noted. Thank you. Commissioner Bonsall. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Gary, thank you so much for your presentation and also for all of the important work that you do. Um, you know, I think that the various awards and recognitions and our reputation statewide and across the country that are noted in the presentation really show the, the great work that you do. So, um, really appreciate it. I, I was curious um, how if you have an idea of how heavily invested the city is in municipal bonds and how risky you think municipal bonds are as an investment. We currently don't hold any municipal bonds. We're allowed to, but uh, I would say the only safe ones to invest in are from the city of Marquette. So that's... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. 
Um, and, and the only other question I had, and um, this is really more out of curiosity as somebody who's not an economist or a financial uh, expert, um, what would incentivize, because I know we've seen negative interest rates in some European countries, for example, what would incentivize somebody to buy bonds that have a negative yield? It's mind-boggling to me, and I've asked that question too, but it's really called a flight to safety. For those who don't know, if you're buying an investment with a negative interest rate, you're basically <coughs> paying them to hold on to your money. You'd actually be better off just taking the money and stuffing it under your mattress <coughs> or something. So a word to my neighbors, if you're listening, please do not check under my mattress or something. <laughs> but really that's all it is. Um, it doesn't make, you might see your big in, institutional investor, investors do it because they have a lot more resources and maybe it doesn't hurt them as much to do that. But for your individual investors, it makes no sense to do that. So Great. Well, thanks. I'm glad we're not just going out and buying lottery tickets. So. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I'll echo thank you, Gary, for the hard work and managing these challenging times, uh, making sure that our money is absolutely safe and secure is, is paramount. Um, <clears throat> and I hope um, that and, and that next year there'll be a full suite of board members that will welcome, walk in with you, <laughs> who will be here with us. So folks, um, this is a really important um, committee that manage, oversees literally all, all our, our finances. So. It would be a, a great one to, for folks who are <coughs> who want to make sure that we keep on this fiscally prudent path. It would be a great opportunity to get involved. So I encourage anyone to apply who's interested in those things. All right. Seeing no further questions, thank you. We're all set. How are folks doing on the phone? Can you hear me okay? Let's see. Can you hear me on the phone? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there any, uh, Jackie, can you hear us? Maybe she's, hmm. She, she went to watch it on TV, I think. <clears throat> um, so uh, th thank you for, um, so we do have a couple people on the phone now. Um, but we are moving in, the next item on the agenda, number five is the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Commissioner Stonehouse. Your Honor, I motion to accept the consent agenda as written. Commissioner Frazier. Second. Discussion? No. Uh, seeing no further discussion, uh, all in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Motion passes 6-0. <clears throat> all right, an unfinished business, item number six, the Hurley Playground Renovation and Grant Acceptance. Clerk, could you please read the background? Thank you. Background, the recreation master plan lists renovating Hurley Field Playground for, to protect users as a high priority. This winter, Sally Davis organized a fundraising campaign to renovate the playground. The city of Marquette has been awarded $15,800 through the, th the three local Rotary Clubs. In addition, the Shiris Institute has awarded the city with a $6,675 grant for the project. These funds, as well as a $250 personal donation, bring the total funds available for the project to $22,725. Staff solicited three quotes for similar playground equipment, and it was determined the equipment from Playworld Mid-States was the best value at $21,855. The children of the neighborhood were also consulted and are very excited about this selection. The swing set offers two accessible seats, one for ages two to five, and one for ages five to 12. The composite structure includes a transfer station, making the equipment accessible to all. The city, <coughs> excuse me, city facilities department will install the equipment and purchase safety netting to protect the playground from the ball field. The Market Board of Light and Power has agreed to donate and install two poles and the netting. While this is a much needed project, it was not planned for this fiscal year. A budget adjustment will be required to accept the funds and purchase the equipment. Fiscal effect, the city will receive $22,725 in revenue and will spend this amount to purchase and install this equipment. The amount was not budgeted for, a bu for and a budget adjustment will be needed. Recommendation, amend the com Community Services Administration budget to include $22,725 in revenue and expense 
accept the Shiris Institute and Rotary Grants and authorize the purchase of Playworld Mid-States equipment in the amount of $21,855. Alternatives as determined by the Commission. Commissioners, do I have a motion? Commissioner Bonso. I move that we uh, amend the Community Services Administration budget to include $22,725 in revenue and expense, accept the Shiris Institute and Rotary Gl Gr Club grants, and authorize the purchase of the Playworld Mid-States equipment in the amount of $21,855. Commissioner Fraser. Second. Discussion? I think this is a wonderful project and a wonderful thing for the community. It's a great example of private, you know, nonprofit sector and the, and the city coming together to do something great. When I was knocking doors in South Marquette when I was running for city commission, people would talk to me all the time about Hurley Field and the playground and how it's such a shame that it's in such bad shape. And now we're, we're, we're making some progress and, and fixing things up, um, you know, thanks to our Parks and Rec staff and to the generosity of these organizations. So thank you to the Rotary Clubs and and the Shires Institute and Sally for uh, Sally Davis for for raising this money, and uh, I think it's especially cool that they consulted the kids in the neighborhood. Um, I think that if we all just went around and asked all the kids in our neighborhoods what they'd like to see in the community, what changes they'd like to see in their neighborhood, it would provide a pretty clear picture of the areas we need to improve as a community. So that's all I have. Commissioner Fraser. Another great example of community coming together for a new playground. I think it's great. Again, I like the fact that it included some inclusive stuff for handicap accessible kids. I think that's great. When I was back on my PAPAC days, we worked on the Prescott Isle Park playground, which got moved to Lower Harbor. Still waiting on funding for that, but hopefully it'll be a great playground to get built next year. Commissioner Schlegel. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, my daughter was in Soma with us at our place there on the corner of Altamont and Hampton for 10 years. And between Giant's Foot and this park, we did not have one, what I would call, uh, satisfactory piece of playground equipment on, in South Marquette. So this is really exciting. Um, I really, I'm, I'm very grateful to uh, uh, Sally Davis and the Rotary Clubs for their contribution for Shiris, uh, Board of Light and Power, everybody that's teaming up to to make this uh, a great push to bring a, a much needed facility to South Marquette. Um, good, great news. You know, these are the types of uh, things that we need to celebrate, and, and every, every time that we they come across our table and and give those people that are doing the hard work to find that money and and uh, to. Uh, recognize them and say thank you so just good stuff all the way around Commissioner Stonehouse I think it's a good opportunity to realize again that things don't happen unless somebody makes it happen and while Rotary as a whole and certainly the Shiris Institute have done great work over many years and will I'm sure continue to do so it really was the the spark plug I think of Sally Davis that said we're going to do it and Sally was the one that made it happen. And that remarkable piece of leadership will certainly be with this city for many years to come. So I want to make sure that we have acknowledgement as how these type of projects happen, never on their own, but because somebody said, I will make it happen. So thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. No see no further discussion. We'll go ahead and vote. All in favor, please say yes. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries 6 0. We have uh, several orders of new business tonight. First, number seven, the proclamation on Spread Goodness Day. Could the clerk please read the proclamation? Thank you. Whereas the idea of Spread Goodness Day was first created in 2017 to inspire a global day of simple goodness by encouraging individuals, schools, and organizations to show the explosive power, power that one act of goodness multiplied by hundreds thousands and maybe millions has to change the world every single day and whereas in 2017 the launch was created as a global, global goodness day initiative headquartered and centered around Marquette, Michigan and whereas the people of Marquette rose up to create impactful spread goodness day events and initiatives a day that individuals, businesses, and schools committed to doing one good thing celebrating goodness explosively together and a day that proves that one action can change the world and Whereas 
the local public schools from elementary to Northern Michigan U University participate in unique Spread Goodness Day events throughout the community to create an explosive atmosphere and empowerment worldwide that the simplest acts of goodness change the world every day and to spread goodness plain and simple and to encourage and to engage schools and student organizations worldwide and to support grassroots nonprofits that help people survive with goodness through sponsoring the fundraising events. And whereas local citizen Anna Dravelin founded the nonprofit event after experiencing the positive effects of engagement with her community, volunteerism, and social action, and whereas despite suffering a massive stroke just after the launch of launching the platform, she has kept the initiative alive through con con excuse me, of goodness sparked in Marquette and th spread throughout the world. And whereas the resolution states that Spread Goodness Day events started in our community and spread to 14 states and at least 10 countries, and whereas on the second Friday of March, we should honor the power and simplicity of goodness to change the world and positively impact our community. Now, therefore, I, Jennifer Hill, Mayor Pro Tem of Marquette, do hereby proclaim the second Friday of March as Spread Goodness Day in the city of Marquette, Michigan, to uplift, uplift our community and inspire the world with acts of goodness. Dated the 16th day of March, 2020. Do we need a motion? No, no, just, <coughs> just, just reading the proclamation. Okay, okay. Um, and then we have item number eight. If the clerk could read the background on this uh, grant for the very important census. Thank you. Background. Recently, staff was informed that the city was eligible for $10,000 for the Michigan Municipal League for the Be Counted 2020 census campaign. These funds are being made available to communities with hard to count populations and are a part of a state effort to increase responses to the 2020 census. Grow and Lead Community and Youth Development, GLCYD, a local 501c3 nonprofit is already engaging in significant efforts towards the census and has developed an action plan and budget to make use of these funds in conjunction with city staff. The city will be applying to the MML on their behalf and will act as a pass-through for the funds if awarded. In consideration of the city agreeing to act as, act as a pass-through, GLCYD agrees to dedicate any funds received in this effort to the purposes set forth in the attached agreement prepared by the city attorney. Fiscal effect, no direct cost to the city. Recommendation, approve the request to act as a fiscal intermediary for MML be counted 2020 census campaign funding of $10,000 for grow and lead community and youth development. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Commissioner Stone, have a motion? Commissioner Stonehouse. Your Honor, I would uh, a motion to approve the request to act as a physical intermediary for the MML Be Counted 2020 Census Campaign, funding of $10,000 for Grow and Lead Community and Youth Development. Commissioner Frazier? Second. Discussion? Only, uh, only discussion being it's a great opportunity to um, use other people's money on something that uh, <laughs> really all will benefit from. <coughs> Commissioner Frazier. Great for ML, MML to stand up and help our youth. Commissioner Lawrence, sir. Yeah, I think this is um, an incredible opportunity to recognize that there are some marginalized groups in Marquette who are very difficult to count. Um, uh, our low-income residents, especially um, our minority groups. I know we're uh, working a lot with um, or have been approached by MML at the Center for Native American Studies to make sure that um, that adequate <coughs> representation in the census is that's definitely important to our community. So I appreciate this initiative, absolutely. Yes, Commissioner Schlegel. Yeah, and I'm gonna jump on uh, back into that comment there because um, if you check your mail, at least our household did receive the, the pamphlet uh, and, and we did sit down as a family and, and call in and and register in the census uh, online. Um, just to you know, look for it in your mail if you haven't seen it uh, come true yet, because it's just it's so important that we all register and that this gets done properly so that everybody is counted, not just uh, uh, not just you know a few people for whatever reason it might be. But there's lots of lots of opportunities, and, and make sure that you're looking for those. 
um, it's a proud moment at our place, I guess, just to be a part of it. So thank you. Further discussion? <clears throat> all right. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Motion passes 6-0. And now we have a new, the new item on the agenda, the city's response to the coronavirus uh, situation. So I <clears throat> think I'll go ahead and we, this is, <laughs> as so many things have happened just in the last uh, 48 hours, uh, and although I know we had started these discussions um, more than a month ago, uh, and many f folks in our community have been asked, are being asked to sacrifice right now in very significant ways. Uh, it is for our public health and for all of us, and uh, each of us can play a very important role uh, in making sure that we stay safe and deal with this, uh, what has been officially called now a pandemic. Um, I would like to, um, turn it over to the city manager, maybe say a few words about city operations and, um, and, and, the, and the things that are coming before the city. Thank you, uh, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, basically, we are uh, striving to maintain our services like we normally do. Uh, we are not planning at this point any disruptions. However, we, were, we are trying to accommodate the concern involving or surrounding the coronavirus. For example, um, our buildings, uh, our city hall will still remain open to the public. However, we are encouraging uh, people to uh, pay either through the drop box that's located on Berg Avenue here in our, ups, up, uh, in our upper parking lot, or to pay their bills uh, via uh, uh, electronic means. Um, we will uh, take, at this point, walk-ins, but interaction with staff will be limited uh, through uh, different protections and, and windows and things of that nature. The Lakeview Arena uh, will be closed to the public. However, staff will be working uh, to maintain city services in that area. So you still can contact them uh, via telephone or online. Uh, our water and sewer plants will continue to function as they normally do and staffed uh, like they normally are. However, not that anybody visits them very much, but uh, public access will be, will be limited as well. Our emergency services, our first responders will be maintaining uh, their um, current high level of service. Um, fire department, uh, which is a little bit more likely to be exposed to outside, uh, is it contagions? Contagions. Um, uh, we'll be at a little higher level of alert and protection than we have been. Uh, police department the same way. Uh, public works will continue to function. However, access to the public works building will be limited. Um, we still will accept people walking in. However, they will not be allowed beyond the uh, front lobby. Um, we are doing everything within our power to maintain the services that we people have come to enjoy and expect from us. Uh, however, we are uh, in constant contact in, with all the uh, uh, responsible parties uh, with the uh, uh, pandemic and our uh, doing everything in line with protecting the public and our employees uh, as well. So uh, rest assured, we will maintain our services. Uh, if anything changes, we will certainly let people know, but that's the uh, level we would like to operate right now. And we, we also, I mean, obviously we ask for public uh, participation as well. So um, feel free to contact my office if you have any questions. Um, certainly we'll address any concerns, and if there's something that comes up that's maybe we hadn't thought about, we'd be happy to address it. Thank you. Commissioner Bonsall. Thank you. Um, I, I, I guess I initially, to, to start, I have a question, you know, for, I, guess, I guess for the city manager, uh, but also for my colleagues, which is that do we think that it would be prudent to have in emergency meeting of the city commission dedicated specifically to various 
options that the city could pursue for responding to the coronavirus uh, crisis, as well as the, the recent the impacts of the recent emergency measures enacted by the state of Michigan? I guess I would say first the city manager, but I'm okay. curious about my colleagues. You, you said me first. <laughs> um, personally, I, I don't think you need to have an emergency meeting at the moment. Um, I'm sharing everything with you that we've been doing. I think you you are reading everything that we have. Um, I will have another document for you tomorrow in a little bit more detail as to what uh, measures staff are taking specifically uh, to expand or expound a little bit further on what I said a moment ago. Um, you know, we are looking at uh, the intricacies of uh, uh, how we handle personnel uh, related to this uh, situation and their need to stay home or to be uh, somewhere else besides here. Uh, certainly we are uh, taking everything into consideration and, and uh, erring on the side of caution and, and uh, certainly looking out for our employees uh, before all else. Um, uh, each one of the staff, each one of the departments, of which we have nine, have submitted a, a list of uh, changes or uh, different actions that they will be taking uh, moving forward. Um, it's a several-page document. However, it's, it's, uh, it's somewhat detailed, and I'd like to share that with you uh, tomorrow, which will give you a better idea of how we were responding. I don't think it's necessarily... Uh, meant for the public and that there's no secrets in it. It's just kind of boring and, and kind of just here's what we're going to do here, here, and here. And uh, certainly anything that we do that affects the public in general or at a greater level than what we're doing now, I would I would say a special meeting might be appropriate. But um, uh, there's just nothing more I can add to the discussion that you haven't already received. Mr. Slagle. Thank you. Um, you want my opinion? All right. Uh, you know, I'd have to agree, I guess, at, at this point with the city manager. Um, I'm glad you brought it up. It's definitely something that, you know, uh, obviously is the buzz around town. The uh, I've had a number of friends or community members approach me and ask, you know, what, what, what do you, you know, is there anything I can do? And my response is, you know, Pay attention to the news, listen to what the governor's doing, follow the leads. Um, I'm hoping to hear a little bit more, or maybe I'm, I'm not, I don't know how the, the, the county health department is kind of uh, injecting anything, whether there's any, anything new or they're, they're just following along with, uh, um, with what the, the governor's mandated. But um, <coughs> I, I guess I would look to hear a little bit more from that uh, entity. Um, I know that, uh, you know, Duke Life Point Marquette General Health here has got their um, place pretty much on lockdown and, and are really doing a good job of trying to limit interactions and make sure that uh, patient's care comes first. And uh, so, you know, respect respect all those wishes that are, are have been put in place. Um, and I guess I would challenge all of us to check on your neighbors, um, you know, reach out. Talk to your friends, your neighbors, uh, some of the elderly, whatever it takes, just to make sure that they've got enough. And if you can, share a share a roll of toilet paper with them, then that would be much appreciated, I'm sure. But the big thing is that you know we have to we have to look out for each other. Um, time and time again, when we talk about uh, the UP and and the people that we are, it's that we have to be UPers taking care of ourselves, UPers taking care of UPers. And this is one of those instances. And um, uh, share with your neighbors. Uh, consider giving to a food pantry if you can. Uh, other other groups that are that are doling out uh, uh, food or or necessary items. Uh, really encourage you if you have a little bit extra, give it. Uh, give as much as you can until it hurts because everybody here uh, in our community needs to to you know make it through this and we're going to do it. So that's my my two cents on it. I guess if I would ask for anything. Uh, plain and simple, I'd say I'd like to hear a little bit more from the, the county, uh, and if there's you know cert certain types of uh, uh, actions that they're going to be taking, and I realize everything changes so quickly, um, so I'd like to hear a little bit more from them. And I would also encourage Mike, if you, if it's possible, for the city to to post these 
things as boring as they may be. If we can get something online, if it's relative, uh, relatively uh, uh, important, then I think that we should at least have something that they can go to. And you know, here's here's some of our our information, whether or not uh, it's going to satisfy their itch or not. But you know, if it's at all possible, but that's my two cents. Thank you, Commissioner Lawrence. I I do think it would be prudent to have an emergency meeting. Um, I, I really appreciated your post today on, on Facebook about um, not only the health impacts of what this does um, to our community, but also the financial burdens that people are facing when um, out of work. Uh, you know, when you're in a salary position and you have accommodations, uh, this can be relatively comfortable to stay in and watch Netflix all day. Or, be quarantined, but we have wage workers in the city who, um, I'm one of them, and uh, the, the financial impacts on especially our low-income people is, is pretty extensive, and I received uh, some information from a citizen today about um, just a parking ticket that he can't pay for. Uh, his, his wife has respiratory issues, and he, you know, tried to plead his case and I think you know it's it's just systemic that we have people pay their parking tickets and so I would be curious what this city can do um, to alleviate any financial burdens um, that are a consequence of of being at home Commissioner Stonehouse <clears throat> I would certainly be in favor of any emergency meeting when we think it necessary. Um, but we also have to understand there's, there's roles and missions that are involved here in what cities do and what counties do and what states do and how we fit into that concept. And at the city level, we don't really, what am I, how am I trying to word this? It starts with the president, it rolls to the state, it rolls to the county, and it ends up with the city of Marquette in terms of direction that we're expecting, support that we're expecting. And for example, we may well be getting reimbursement. Those folks that are not drawing a salary now may well be getting or reimbursement, at least as you read some of the acts in Congress. So it becomes a constantly moving stream of information and changes in, 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 mid, in mid current, so to speak. Uh, this afternoon at three o'clock, I think listening to the EOC press conference from DC, they were talking that now you should not be congregating in groups larger than 10. And that's in direct contravention to what the governor had said this morning. I'm not blaming the governor, I'm saying that the target is moving very rapidly. We also need to realize that the role of the city commission is broadly speaking to make and approve policy. It is not to put our fingers in the pie and tell people what to do and how to do it. We make policy, we hire experts to run the city and they are the people who make that, those, those, if you will, smaller level decisions that actually make things happen. So I have the greatest confidence of what we have in city staff now as we move forward. If we come to those situations where it's necessary that we look at something beyond their ability to manage it, then we need to get together and we need to figure that out. But at the moment, I'm comfortable with where the city is going and what the city is doing. That said, we can always make a suggestion, and my suggestion might be on our, the front of our, face, of our uh, uh, website page, we have one corner dedicated to the coronavirus. Uh, that simply is a hot button uh, hit every day of something new that's occurring or something citizens should be more aware of. I'm really glad to see the pushes coming out of Facebook. I think we should continue to do that. But again, those are initiative items that are really happening without the city commission's involvement. So if it's necessary, absolutely, we get together, we do it, but we need to have a purpose in mind to do so. Thank you for your time. Uh, any yep. other comments? Sure, I, I had one other question. And at first, I just wanna thank everybody for their input. Um, I, I generally agree with what I think the consensus is here. Um, you know, and I also, I also think that, uh, you know, it's important for us as commissioners to be providing uh, sort of suggestions and, uh, and, and the feedback that we're receiving from the community, but ultimately we do need to trust those professionals that uh, are in positions of, of leadership here in the city, and I have full confidence in, in our leadership. And um, I, I was curious, uh, I know that there are other municipalities that 
have been uh, suspending, uh, temporarily suspending uh, shutoff notices and shutoffs for utilities, for municipal utilities in the United States uh, and here in the state of Michigan. Uh, and it's my understanding that as of today, we are not going to be shutting off people's water. Um, is, that, is that correct? Uh, That's correct, and we're not going to be assessing any late fees. Good. Thank you. And, and, and I, I'm just, uh, I guess as, far, as long as we're talking about suggestions, I, I want to echo the, the suggestions of uh, Commissioner Schlegel and Commissioner Stonehouse about getting more information out on the city website um, and, and out on social media. And also, you know, perhaps as we move forward, and I'll maybe mention some of this in commission, commission co commissioner comment later, but that we might consider turning water back on for people who are currently, any, any occupied uh, you know, buildings that are currently under a, you know, where a shut, where a shut off for water services is in effect. Um, and that we also might do some more research, um, as I think, as I think we're already doing into, uh, what the city could do to ease this financial burden that Commissioner Lawrenzer is talking about. Um, certainly the, the actions that we're already taking with regards to utilities and utility shutoffs is part of that. Um, the actions we're already taking to review our uh, city employees uh, leave policies is part of that um, but I also think that we need to th be thinking about housing um, you know, at the end of the day we can't expect people to stay home if they're not going to be able to afford to have a home um, if they're they're missing wages and they're laid off or having hours cut so I would encourage the city uh, to be looking into uh, some options that other municipalities are already exploring um, in parts of the state in this country with regards to limitations on evictions for non-payment of rent as well as limitations on uh, foreclosures um, at the very least for residential properties so I really appreciate the input and that's uh, all I have to say I have a couple things I want to add um, thank you for that conversation at this very important time um, and I know the city staff spent several hours today meeting and um, working on getting that response and I look forward to seeing the report and uh, the further evolution of this as we figure out what's going to be the best routes going forward. I myself spoke to about 10 different people I think this today, I've been on the phone actually talking to people, uh, which was great um, today. And one of the things I learned is um, that uh, several of our uh, Warm, uh, food banks and uh, <clears throat> places of food distribution actually rely on the restaurants and NMU food recovery programs for as sources of food. And now that we have this major change with uh, the bars and restaurants uh, moving to only takeout and delivery, uh, it may there may be an additional need. And I just wanted to highlight that here today. But uh, what, keep watch, um, again, this is, everyone's heard, but it's moving very quickly, but that was a need that was identified for me today as a possible, uh, something that folks, if you're looking for something to do, um, the warming center, the room at the inn, uh, our Salvation Army's a food pantry, and probably others, I forgive, forgive me for not naming them all right now, but um, you can call 211 in Michigan to learn about uh, available services. That's also been uh, said by the governor and others as a, as a source of information. And um, let's see, did I hit my list? Yeah, and uh, as was said, the, the health information is primarily through from the county and then the state. And uh, staying on top of that, and, and I know I've been using um, Facebook as a way to communicate in Instagram. Um, and the city does have a Facebook account as well for official city business, and that can be another place. But primarily, you want to go to michigan.gov slash coronavirus, um, which is the beer with virus at the end. But remember, the beer is fine. Um, seeing no f any further comments, I think we're good for now. But yes, we will all strive to protect our community this is a very important, significant public health threat. And what I, I will close by saying that what I was told uh, by a local doctor is what's going to happen in our rural community is it's, it will be here, but it's going to be here a little later. So while we aren't, why are we doing this all now? Um, just like there was that run on the grocery stores, 
we don't want there to be a run on uh, ICU and ventilator equipment. We want to smooth that out and try to reduce transmission as much as possible. So thank you again for everyone. FECOBOL are making significant sacrifices at this time, and we greatly appreciate them. Moving on to our new item 10. Um, I'm realizing I'm not sure. I have the clerk read. Um, oh, the city attorney um, regarding the resignation. I just have one comment on that, uh, and that is that you need to be mindful um, of, a, of when you accept that resignation because that triggers the 60-day requirement of appointing a new commissioner. And if you want that 60 days to start now, act now. If you want to buy yourself a little time, given the current circumstances of the public health and the community and the state and the nation, maybe you want to acknowledge it tonight but not accept it until the next meeting. Okay. I and so that would um, I recognizing that um, we're going to have a change in the membership of the commission. It's going to start this evening, and then we will have a process of reappointment, or I should say, of appointment, um, where we will be accepting applications uh, for that person, and the decision has been made that the process for selecting the next person will happen uh, at the next commission meeting uh, when Mayor Smith will have returned. So we will, um, we can acknowledge, uh, for on a legal basis, I, I'm hearing we need to acknowledge the resignation and understand that um, the process for determining how that seat will be filled will be uh, fully laid out at the March 30th meeting. Question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, if I'd like to be very clear here, um, number one, I want to honor uh, Commissioner Lorenzer's wish in, an, in, a, in a way that is uh, timely. And I just want to make sure. So, are we saying that we should not make a motion if we don't want the 60 day to start now, but his resignation would not be? What I would do if you don't want the 60 days to start today is I would acknowledge that you've received the correspondence mm -hmm. of um, the intent to resign um, and take no further action beyond that. Okay, with that being said though, I think, well, Go ahead. what's your wish, Andrew? I mean, I, w I wanna respect that more than, than the, mm -hmm. the 60 days, quite honestly. Um, I think if you acknowledge it tonight, I please, and then wait for two weeks. Don't expect me at any work sessions or anything. Right, right. No, um, it will be in effect. You know, it can okay. be a, a lingering. I mean, I, I don't like that, but. Um, what do you want? I would like it to be accepted tonight. I think that uh, 60 days is, you know, when people apply for. Uh, the appointment process, it is digital. It's something that doesn't require a lot of uh, interaction considering the pandemic. Um, but I, I also, I, I wanna leave that up to your judgment as well because you're gonna have to process this and I'm regrettably not. Um. Excuse me, I would recommend that we um, accept the letter tonight and then act on it at the next meeting and, and assure uh, Commissioner Lawrenzer that uh, by all practical means you'll be considered resigned. I mean, we will not include you in any further uh, commission action. Um, I think that the, uh, the time frame, given what's going on and, and the amount of time city staff is spending on other things, the extra two weeks would be very helpful for us to process this properly. Respect, I respect that. that. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I need a motion to receive and accept. Oh, no, we just need, oh. A, oh. We need to acknowledge. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we just decided to acknowledge, I beg your pardon. Um, so I, I as- Discuss that or is that a decision that we made uh, to acknowledge? 
I guess, is there further discussion? I would suggest that we accept the resignation. 60 days is plenty of time. That's the same amount of time we had when we did previous uh, situations where we had uh, folks either leave for various reasons. So there's no arbitrary limit there. In other words, 60 days is what we've used before. You can use it now. And I, out, of, out of all respect, I don't want to see uh, Commissioner Loringer hanging there. And he would just be hanging. And I think if the decision is made, we should honor that decision and get on with it instead of arbitrarily letting it hang. Now, I realize the manager would like more time, but the, the, the coronavirus is not going away. The situation is not going to change in the next 60 days. We know what we've got coming. And we're as well to deal with it now as we will be in 60 days. And I appreciate the attorney's viewpoint on, look, you can buy more time, and she did a good job advising us of that. But that's neither here nor there based on what this commission may choose to do. I said my 10 cents. I want to say that the mayor also has a voice here, and the mayor would like to be a part of making sure that the process is fully vetted. Um, so this is both her and I saying that Going forward, we want to move forward with the commission fully outfitted at that time. So I, I think there's, I think we can ex acknowledge and move forward and then have the process be determined at the next meeting and everything can move forward. Um, I think I saw Commissioner Slagle first. There were some uh, hands oh, up down there. Sorry, Commissioner Frazier. I agree, Mr. Tonos. I mean, I guess Andrew's best wishes. It's his decision to move on. We could get the process started. I know there's a lot of people already thinking about running for city commission. Maybe in November, they can put their applications in. The city can take a look at it, but there, we have 60 days to process it. We've done this before. We've got a, a process we laid out for with replacing Ms. Kambedzi. That's how we get Jenna Smith to, to our city council. And then when our dear friend, Mr. Baldini, passed away, we had to fill his spot and we assumed the same position, accepted the applications, went through the paperwork and found somebody to replace him. So it's a process we've done before. And like Mr. John Hall said, we have 60 days to process it. So we have plenty, we should have enough time. I mean, the city's bogged down with a lot of stuff going on right now. So it won't happen right now, but we'll make an announcement at the next meeting saying, okay, Here's how to, you know, submit your applications and so forth and so on, but let us move on with our process and respect the learning search wishes. Commissioner Bonson. Yeah, I, I have a question. So, and I suppose whoever has the answer to it, please feel free to respond. Um, I, I completely understand the desire to have more time and that we could buy ourselves more time by waiting until the next meeting to formally accept it or whatever. Um, but I, I think we really need to respect Commissioner Lawrence's wishes. And also, I think that arguably, I mean, it's, I think Commissioner Stonehouse uh, put it much better than I can. I think that he made some strong arguments that it's also in the best interest of the city to move forward. Um, however, my question is, I, I, I agree that we want to have Mayor Smith involved in this process from the start. But what is to stop us from accepting the letter tonight? and then just beginning that process at our next meeting on March 30th and not doing anything else tonight. I mean, I, I suppose the, the mayor could still be part of that conversation then and drive it from the beginning. It, it kind of depends on what you ultimately do tonight, but if you accept, formally accept the resignation by charter, you have 60 days to find a new uh, I understand. Sorry, I don't think my mic was on, so oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. So what I said was, um, if you formally accept the resignation tonight, then you, by the, by the charter, have 60 days to find a replacement. If you do not formally accept it, um, when you do formally accept it, that's when that 60 days starts. I, I, I understand. I guess what I was asking is, you know, why do we need to, to wait, given that I think that's a good point. 60 days is a long time, and we've done it in far less than that in the past. Okay, Mr. Lawrence. Um, I, I do think that the mayor should be a part of the the official conversation, but um, you know, given her maternity leave, 
Uh, I have been in close contact with the mayor for the past several days, um, and my letter is to her. It is addressed to her um, for all intents and purposes that I know. She supports my decision. She understands it. Um, and I don't know if that's important to the conversation, but okay. um, we are also in this unique circumstances where people who have uh, the intent to run in November have already, you know, made up their mind on that. So we do have interest within that 60 day period that it's up to you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, I, sorry, I feel like I might have let this drag. I do you want to, I, 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 I think so the, the question is what, it seems like the question on the table is, if we accept it then it's 60 days, it's 60 days from today is May 15th, I looked it up. I think that's plenty of time to make it, get through the process. And in the last two instances, it was done in four weeks and five weeks. So um, this is longer than both of those time periods. So I am comfortable um, with accepting the resignation that is Commissioner Lawrence's uh, um, wishes. Um, and it does mean that we have until May 15th, which should be plenty of time. It just means we aren't announcing the process tonight, but we'll announce the process at our next meeting on March 30th. So with, with that being said, thank you. I'd make the motion to um, recognize and accept the letter of resignation for Commissioner uh, Lawrenceer. Um, knowing that we have the start point for the 60-day uh, process to replace him will uh, commence immediately following. Okay, thank you. Second, uh, Commissioner uh, Bonsall. I'll second that motion. Discussion? Uh, good luck. <laughs> Best of luck to you. I hope that uh, your, your, your path is straight and that uh, you find uh, where you, where you want to go. Mr. Bonsall. Yeah, I would just echo those sentiments and just say that it's been, I, you know, I, know, I know you noted in your letter that it's been an honor to serve on the commission, but it's been an honor to serve with you. So thank you, and I'm sure you'll continue giving back to our community. Mr. Stonehouse. I wish you all luck in the world. And I think that you certainly will be able to move forward and, and continue. Uh, one comment, though, Your Honor, we do have the opportunity to establish a work session if the commission wants to sit down and come up with the plan that we would use to replace and then in turn be in a position to announce that already made up at our next commission meeting and i'm not comfortable doing that until the mayor is officially fully back with us right i oh, mean that would allow her to be fully involved in the entire process uh, not until March 30th is my understanding, but Commissioner City Manager has a point, a statement he'd like to. I, I only make that as a comment. Um, my comment would be that we've been through this uh, twice in the last few years and we are fully prepared to begin the process. If you'd like me to explain or if you're comfortable with the previous two processes, which were the same, I can explain that tonight. And I'd also like to point out that we still might be having meetings like this when that decision is made. And I think that needs to be a consideration uh, that applicants may not be in the room at the time you make that decision. But if you'd like me to, I'll explain. Yeah, just very high level. So this is not that what we will do, but what we could do based on previous practice. Hang on, hang on. Um, what we have done in the past is we've uh, made applications available online. Uh, interested individuals will give them a two-week period to uh, fill out the applications. Once those applications are received and the deadline is over with, we would then pass along those applications to the commissioners uh, with the intent of scheduling one of the agenda items at a future meeting within that 60-day window. Uh, once that uh, meeting is scheduled and that agenda item is on the uh, meeting, uh, then the commission would go forth with uh, selecting from that group who they want to replace. 
uh, the exiting commissioner. And what we've done in the past is we've used the uh, uh, ballot form of uh, or ballot method of selecting the new commissioner. In other words, each commissioner, kind of like what you do with the mayor and the pro tem, you, you, we go back and forth or keep taking votes until someone gets a majority of votes. Um, it seems to be a, uh, a system that has worked well in the past. I really um, uh, don't can't think of any modifications you might want to do that, but um, um, certainly it's it's something worth considering. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is move on and have final comments of the commissioner comments um, because we do need to vote on the um, acceptance and then we can have final statements at the at the um, in the comments. I think we understand that. Um, maybe want to restate the motion that uh, Commissioner Slagle made, please, just to review. Because we are going to need to vote on <clears throat> I believe it's so the motion was to accept the letter from Commissioner Lor Lorenzers as his resignation okay. and start the 60-day process all in favor of the motion please vote yes. yes 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 all in opposed say no the ayes have it it passes 6-0 thank you we are now moved into the second public comment period uh, is there anyone on is there anyone on the phone? Speak into the Yeah, maybe yes. Hello, this is Margaret Brum. I'm on the phone. We can hear you, Margaret. Go ahead. Hello, this is Margaret Brum. I'm on the phone. We can hear you, Margaret. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. This is Margaret Brum. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Oh, oh no. Margaret, go ahead. Uh, good evening. This is Margaret Brown. I'm at 404 East Magnetic Street. Uh, good evening. This is Margaret Brown. I'm at 404 East Magnetic Street. Turn your TV off. You need to turn your TV uh, off, Margaret, please. I'm at 404 East Magnetic Street. <laughs> Margaret, could you please turn off your TV because it's <laughs> echoing back into the room. There, much better. I'm going to put you back on speaker. Thank you. Go Apologies, ahead. this is new to me. Yes, new to all of us. Thank you very much. We can hear you loud and clear. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that the sound went off when Gary Simpson was talking financials and I had to call in to get the sound back on my TV. So my apologies, um, I have been quieter longer. Uh, I wanted to um, make a, a point of saying that the uh, resolution for the Hurley Field Playground Equipment, uh, congratulating uh, Sally Davis and the Rotarians, is a tremendous example of a community coming together to uh, take care of the, the children and provide the playground equipment that everybody needs. And then I felt bad for Sally all during the campaign last year when she was working very hard to be elected. She was also working very hard to get uh, these children this playground and I shared with her her excitement when she sat down with John and actually ordered equipment and I note uh, I read all the details that this playground will have two accessible swings and I wanted to congratulate her and say that I'm thrilled that the city is moving forward in South Marquette with a field for Hurley with a playground for Hurley Field because uh, I remember it from a child and it was a very good place to play. So that's my comment for the night. I wanted to just echo what the commission already said about um, Sally Davis. Thank you. And I'm very sorry about the problem with the TV. Thank you, Margaret. Is there anyone else on the, on the telephone call? Anyone else? Hearing none. I'm going to go ahead and close public comment. Oh, we have an email. I'm sorry. We do have an email to be read. Thank you. Go ahead. This is from Sally, da Sally Davis, 1711 Grandview Drive. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Marquette, I want to thank the city for supporting the Hurley Field Playground Project through adjustment of the budget and plans. 
It is important that everyone recognize the city's role and the role of the Board of Light and Power in making this happen as it will take adjustment of resources. This project is about the power of Rotary, the commitment of the community, and the passion of those who are connected to South Marquette and the ball field. It was South Marquette resident Lenny Desjardins that sparked the idea. And when Rotary set out to raise funds for a new swing set, we had no idea that the project would become as large and significant as it has. The ice cream social we hosted in September saw many elementary students bring in change from their piggy banks. Parents added to the donation Parents added to the donation cans with 20, 50, and several $100 checks. One couple sent us $1,000 after the event. It was then that our club recognized this, that this was something bigger than a swing set. The two other Rotary Clubs in Marquette added to the fund. Then came the Reynolds Foundation. Through a grant from the Rotary Foundation, we doubled the pot of money. Donations kept trickling in. A bench was donated, and the Shiris Foundation provided a very significant grant. But the best part of this project is the number of people who, has ex who have expressed gratitude and their interest in volunteering to do the physical work. Two young girls stopped me one day to ask if they could help. Emma, Charlotte, and their friend Rocky have been the advisors for John Swenson and I. They told us what they wanted, a new swing set, a slide, and something to climb on. They continually advised us on the equipment and had final say on what was proposed to you this evening for purchase. This project is showing these young people and their friends how things can be accomplished through community engagement. Thank you, commissioners and staff, for your part in this project and for allowing it to go forward. There are many communities, there are many in the community who will be celebrating the renewal of this playground. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you to everyone for the patience as we um, figure out how to do this and work through telephone and email. Um, carrier pigeons could land on the top of the building, but I don't think we could let them in. But uh, thank you, everyone, very much. And uh, we will continue to welcome your comments at our meetings going forward. Uh, we now um, will have uh, comments from the commission. May I start? Sure. Commissioner Lawrence is going to give a start off. Um, I obviously have a problem with brevity, so bear with me. So I regretfully have submitted my resignation as commissioner of the city of Marquette. Over the past several weeks, my mental health has been severely impacted during inevitable divisions within our community. I am attuned to the gravity of my decision this has been extraordinarily difficult for me and my family. I now must accept my emotional limitations and recognize that they have been exceeded. They are unlikely to improve with time as a public official, and I have been forced to reconsider the leadership role that I play in my beloved city. I know this may come as a shock to citizens, if I have let anyone down by rescinding my seat just six months into my term, please accept my most sincere apologies. I genuinely thought I could handle the consequences of speaking up for change in the community. Never did I think I would resign at the first significant sign of political and personal adversity. I, too, am incredibly disappointed in my inability to withstand it. My torment has been private, but it's real, it's torrential, and it's debilitating. I hope citizens agree that the circumstances were distinct and unpredictable. I am disheartened that the debate over our high school nickname became so personal and so divisive. I hope the Board of Education makes a decision for the betterment of our community however they see fit. I stand by my position on the issue, but I do not wish any further fraction in Marquette because of my service. Although individuals have privately attempted to deteriorate my self-esteem and publicly vilified my reputation, I do not blame any dissension on any collective group or organized efforts to recall me. As I passionately do my best with the knowledge bestowed upon me, Citizens are doing what they believe is best for a representative democracy. I humbly resign under my own accord with the hope that it can somehow unify citizens. 
I wanted to serve my community and do big good things for the love of Marquette. I took a very different approach than my predecessors. And although I firmly believe that there's a role for passionate activism in government, for me, it is no longer as a member of this commission. I do recognize that my methods of advocacy could have been more politically astute. I hope to have a long career advocating for political causes in a different capacity for the foreseeable future amidst this significant cultural debate I do not have the mental or the emotional fortitude to continue service. Maintaining my health must be a first priority. Spending the next year into a possible recall election defending a non-city issue and myself is not productive for my personal stability or the business of the city of Marquette. I extend my deep heartfelt appreciation and apologies to my strongest supporters and volunteers. I am eternally grateful for your support. Thank you for helping me accomplish what we have. You are the change. I take full responsibility for my leadership role in the Redmen Redette conversation. Although I vehemently maintain my position on the issue, it is apparent my office and title made my communication methods unconducive to positive public discourse. If I miscommunicated about this issue, my intentions were earnest. I had always told the truth as best as I knew it, and I value ethics and trans transparency. I admittedly made mistakes, as I am invariably imperfect. Consequence consequently, my life and my family have been disturbed and distracted to the extent that I no longer feel that I can play a proficient role in my government. In addition, the distraction has taken a significant toll on my personal, academic, work, and home life. I do not wish to cast blame or entice further conflict with any group for my resignation. I understand and appreciate citizens' rights to hold their government officials accountable. I never envisioned things would escalate as they have, and I apologize for any role that I played in that. For however short, serving Marquette was truly the honor of my life. I was dedicated to being a great commissioner, but reaction to my passion for a solitary outside issue has taken precedence and would continue to take precedence over my ability to govern. I now must concentrate on being a better employee, a better student, a better fiance, <coughs> and a better community advocate. If you voted for me, please understand I never intended to disappoint you. I wholeheartedly intended to serve two terms and push policy in which I fundamentally believe. I never anticipated anything <coughs> like this. I have always understood my role on commission was to advocate for progressive values, and I'm not permanently retreating, but I'm confident that my former colleagues <coughs> will fill my vacancy accordingly. The city is in good hands under the direction of Mayor Smith and Manager Angeli. I now need to focus exclusively <coughs> on sustaining the well-being and stability of myself for my family and my future. Please. Don't let my resignation further divide the community. I truly believe this is for the best. Let's use this as a teaching moment for both sides to start a new, more positive dialogue sans personal attacks. I appreciate privacy at this time and I apologize for any confusion or chaos my resignation may bring to the functions of the city. I know Marquette will eventually survive these external and internal qualms and we will all be better because the conversation took place. With profound gratitude, I'm humbly yours. Thank you. I'll go next here since Mayor Pro Tem is out of the office. Um, there's a good speech, Andrew. As far as you know, the various thing going on, I don't think we can we can have a, a meeting about that if we want, but I think the city managers are doing a good job running the city for things that the governor is telling us what to do, like 
like they've said, it goes from the Trump to the government to down to the governor, back just spill on down. And we're no experts. I mean, we all read what we want online and take discussions, but we can't make any adjustments to say, okay, do this, do this, because we don't really have any power. So, I mean, we can say what we think is well, but we can't, you know, make any decisions. I don't think it's good for us to make decisions. I think it's up to the our local, like the governor, to pass things by, our city manager do a good job, and let things go, and we can't make our recommendations because that's up to the health care to make things good, and hopefully we get through with this. I know our students were a little shocked at having school Friday. We knew Monday was coming, but they were shocked on Friday. They had a fun day scuttled, but it didn't happen, so they were a little disappointed, but they're finding different ways to do it. My daughter's taking a bunch of online classes that she does after school activities, and she's found a way to take care of that stuff, and it's doing good for her. And just wanted to point out that in our consent agenda, our local church museum got a lot of pass-through funding through Chippewa and the KBC. So thank you to KBC and the Chippewa for helping our church museum get better. Other than that, good job. Commissioner Bunsell. <clears throat> First, I just want to thank Commissioner Lawrenzer for his service to the city of Marquette. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, it's been an honor to serve with you, and you know, I appreciate uh, you know the courage that you displayed in making the decisions that's best for you and for your family. Um, I also want to I want to thank the city manager uh, and city staff for taking much needed action to minimize the threat posed by coronavirus to our community. Uh, I think I speak for everyone in this room and, and, and in the city of Marquette when I say I'm grateful uh, to have Mr. Angeli at the helm at this moment. Um, and I also want to thank the many healthcare workers and first responders in our community who will be on the front lines of this ongoing public health crisis. As many people know, today Governor Whitmer placed major restrictions on uh, the hospitality and service industry. And the CDC also recently issued guidance over the weekend discouraging any gatherings of more than 50 people for the next eight weeks. And I think as one of my colleagues noted, now that's down to 10 people. Um, while I strongly support these actions, they will have serious consequences for city residents, especially small business owners and service industry workers who often <coughs> earn low wages. Um, I'm also concerned that the paid leave measures implemented by the city may still be providing a significant incentive for sick employees to come to work, so I'm glad that we're making progress on that. I believe that we have a responsibility as city leaders to do what we can to contain the spread of the virus while supporting the most vulnerable members of our community. Um, and at, at future meetings, uh, it, I, and as the, ci as the city staff is working on this, I hope that we consider uh, various measures, including restoring water service to all occupied buildings currently subject to a utility shutoff for non-payment, as many municipalities, including several here in Michigan, have already <coughs> done. Changing our paid leave policies uh, temporarily to remove any financial or compensation-related incentives for sick employees to come into work. Allowing city employees to work from home, especially if they are in a high-risk population, uh, or have child care needs due to the recent public school closures, uh, <coughs> as well as considering uh, citywide moratorium or limitations on residential rental evictions for non-payment of rent, as many other municipalities around the country have done, a and finally doing anything that we can to minimize or postpone foreclosures, especially residential foreclosures, as some Michigan counties are already considering doing. These might seem like pretty extraordinary steps, especially for a local government to take, but according to the Census Bureau, uh, take the census, by the way, uh, according to the Census <coughs> Bureau, data shows that one in eight Marquette workers are employed in the food prep and service industry, 37% of all city households, and 58% of renters are a cost burden, which means they spend more than 30% of their income on housing. Um, and most small businesses in the city are very ill-equipped to deal with this crisis and to deal with the restrictions imposed by the state. 97% uh, of small businesses earn less than $250,000 in income per year. Uh, so <coughs> and, and one in four employees do not have paid sick leave. So this is clearly a major crisis for the city already. Even if there's not a single coronavirus case in the city of Marquette, 
thousands of city residents are going to be seriously negatively impacted by the important emergency steps that have already been taken. And we have a responsibility uh, to help reduce the financial burden imposed on city residents who might get sick, have their hours cut, <coughs> get laid off, um, or have their places of employment or their businesses temporarily close uh, or restrict hours. Um, and I also would just conclude uh, by urging our community partners to take similar emergency action if they have not already. Um, in particular, I, I, I hope that uh, affordable housing providers in the city follow the lead of organizations like the Lansing Housing Commission and the Capital Area Housing Partnership downstate to postpone <coughs> evictions and waive fees for late rent. And I also hope that the Marquette Board of Light and Power will follow the lead of Consumers Energy and DTE Energy, um, as well as for water utilities, the city of Marquette, in suspending uh, electricity shutoffs for low-income customers. Um, and finally, I just urge everyone in the community to, if at all possible, whenever possible, please stay at home. Uh, do not go to work, if you're, especially if you're feeling ill. Um, and please don't go to the emergency room or the walk-in clinic if you're feeling sick as well, because you could be exposing uh, people who are sick and immunocompromised to, to the virus. Um, and, and also, please refrain from hoarding food, toiletries, medicine. Uh, that doesn't help anybody. Um, and, and lastly, make sure, as Commissioner Schlegel noted earlier, to check in on your friends, your family members, your neighbors. Uh, right now, we all need to band together and do what's right for the sake of our community and look out for one another. So I really appreciate everybody that tuned in tonight. And if you have any concerns, please feel free to email me um, or give me a call at 906-236-0247. Thank you. Have a nice night. Commissioner Schlegel. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, real quick, uh, just going back again, look for your census cards in the mail. Get, uh, get, get that <coughs> taken care of. It literally takes five minutes, and it's a great, um, it's a great part of what we need to, uh, to do to make sure that we're going to get all the funding that we possibly can as a community. I was really excited last Friday, I think, was the first time I saw the city truck out uh, filling some potholes. <laughs> they are on it, and uh, I'm gonna, nice. gonna gonna beat the I'm gonna beat that issue to death. I'm sure, in the months to come. But uh, let it be known that they are already out there working to, uh, uh, to to get things filled as necessary and keep us from having uh, major infrastructure issues. So thank you for the city staff for doing that and uh, for moving forward. Um, <coughs> Uh, again, I just want to stress uh, at this time, you know, with, with everybody being out of work or however it is, be kind to your neighbor, help your neighbor out. If there's something that you can do, volunteer. Uh, but, you know, again, stay safe. And if you're, you know, the best thing you can do is just hunker down and, uh, and keep, uh, keep things from getting any worse than they, they, they need to be. So that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse. A couple things, if I can. I'd like to again thank Commissioner Loringer for his service and to praise him for the courage of his decision, because I'm sure this was an extraordinarily difficult one and uh, takes great, great strength of character to do so. So thank you. I'm the history guy. In difficult times, I look back to the lessons of the past. And this virus leads directly to President uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's first inaugural address in 1933 during the height of the Great Depression. 11,000 out of 20,000 banks across the country had closed. Think of everybody that lost their life savings, every nickel they had when that bank went down. Millions of people out of work. Agitators in the streets demanding the U.S. turn communists like Russia. That was the situation. Does anybody remember the key phrase from Roosevelt's speech, the one that we still remember today? Quote, all we have to fear is fear itself. And with it, he united the people of the United States to fight a war, not against a flesh and blood, a flesh and blood enemy as we did after 9-11, but against the depression itself 
and that depression was every bit as dangerous as the coronavirus is today. Americans were dying with a lack of food, from starvation, from poor medical care, the same things that arguably could be happening with corona. But new heroes emerged too. Millions of everyday Americans working in new federal programs like the Works Progress Administration building new national infrastructure, including the dam at the Hoover Dam and roads and, and other facilities, thousands more replanting the forests and the Civilian Conservation Corps, and many more agencies that folks step forward to man and to make run. And heroes are emerging, emerging, emerging today too and to reach just down US 41 a little bit, and Nagani, the Jackson Pit restaurant, is providing free lunches for all of the children from the Nagani school system as they're out of, out of class. And Marquette Diggs Restaurant is building a food bank for those in need. And other heroes are emerging every day. Just check the media, read the newspapers, watch the news, and you'll find people from the area stepping forward during this difficult time to help their friends and neighbors. Americans are and will continue to do what we always do in times of crisis, helping out our neighbors, protecting our most valuable citizens, our most vulnerable citizens, rather, working together to defeat any enemy. And lastly, the coronavirus is an enemy <coughs> just as deadly as we have ever faced. It's the real thing. It's not business as usual. That's why we've taken the extraordinary step of this meeting tonight and closing chambers down to the public and providing access through the media, by television, by telephone, by streaming video, and still conducting it. But if we pull together, follow the data-driven instructions, I'll say that again, the data-driven instructions from our healthcare leaders, we will overcome the virus quickly, and we will revive and prosper. It's gonna to be tough. We can do it if we pull together and watch out for our friends and our neighbors. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> well said, commissioners. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Lawrence, sir. Um, <clears throat> we are at a critical point right now, it, um, and we are, I've heard many, several of my conversations today, we're in this moment of calm before the storm. And <clears throat> I, I just, again, will thank everyone for the sacrifices they're making now, the sacrifices we're gonna have in front of us, um, and I know that we will, when we come together, we will have, we'll have we're gonna, there's going to be new ways that we've never done before, but I think we, we're inventive and creative and, um, and strong, and we will find a way to get through this. Um, <clears throat> and I do have seasonal allergies, <laughs> so I apologize. I, I, um, I was coughing quite a bit. I, I'm sure that it's seasonal allergies um and because now with the melting snow this is when it comes out for me so i do apologize and um i uh, just i think folks were very eloquent on the threats in front of us and the concerns that we have thank you very much i have nothing more to add um thank you for the ability your time and patience with me as i was running the meetings uh, as i said mayor smith will be back on march 30th um i look forward to being a commissioner again getting to make motions but thank you very much for your the time, and I'm going to turn it over to the city manager. Thank, thank you, uh, Madam Pro Tem. Um, just to make a point that our next meeting will be on March 30th, and it will probably be set up the same way it is today. Um, I don't anticipate anything changing drastically in the next two weeks, so we, I'd like to ask you to plan on being in the same situation and remind the public that it will be uh, probably that way. And if there's anything that uh, comes out of this that we need to change or will change, we'll, we'll let you know. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything else to add except that uh, with regard to uh, Commissioner Bonzella, I will be speaking with uh, the BLP. I'll be speaking with the Housing Commission and following up on your concerns as well. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the city remains or it remains ready to um, deal with this situation in any way possible. So thank you. Thank you. Meeting adjourned at 7. seven.